Zondag. It's finished. I'll be moving out tomorrow. Want me to send it? Or bring it personally? Right. Don't get too excited. Bloody row off! Don't you know people have to work in the morning? There's nobody there! They're not back yet! Come back to bed! There's somebody there! That radio's been playing for hours! Doctor says he's been dead about seven or eight hours. Uh, exit between uh, six and seven p.m. Yeah, no prints, just smudges, and no attempt to get rid of it. Villain Zondag, no indication of what he did. Uh, not his apartment. No, it belongs to a family called Loughton. They've been away three weeks. Do you want to speak to the caretaker? Yeah, in a minute. I'll have a look around first. You in charge? Yes. Oh, I found the body. Went and got my husband. That's him. Look at him, poor man, shocked. Next door. Neighbours, that's right. Ask me anything you like. Well, Does a young couple live here? He's a merchant seaman. She's gone with him on a voyage. Doesn't like leaving her here on her own, he says. Not in this area. <laughs> right, isn't he? They're finished. Never saw him before. Thanks, lads. Never even knew anybody was here until tonight. And the radio blaring. Yeah. What sort of friends did they have, the uh, Loutons? Oh, we don't know any of their friends. Look, I'll have to take my poor husband home. Yes, right. Anything else you want to know? Thank you. Ah. Uh... Yes, I had a look. Nothing. Hey, come back. Yes, you, come here. Come on. What was he doing here? It's a simple enough question, isn't it? Did he know the tenants? Had they let him have this flat while they were away? Yeah, yeah, must have done. Must have done. But we'll soon find out, won't we? When they come back, when's that? End of the month. You've had an empty flat on your hands for three weeks. He's made no attempt to conceal the fact that he was living here and he's been here, what? At least a week, the food in that kitchen. And you've never seen him? But you know about everybody who comes and goes, don't you? Well, come on, it's your blasted job, isn't it? In all fairness. What? Well, the woman next door didn't hear anything either. She was positive the flat was empty. What are you nodding at, eh? Do you want me to investigate everything you do? Now, you just tell me how much he paid you. 400 guilders. Did he ask for this flat especially? No. No, he just asked if uh, any were empty. And I showed him this one and he... He said it suited him all right, and he'd be out in a fortnight. Anything else? Yeah. He didn't want anyone else to know he was here. I bet you didn't either, did you? All right, go on. We'll talk again. Okay. All right. Willem Zondag, Klemperingstraat, 110, Rotterdam. Sir. You staying here? Yeah. Might have a bit of a walk around. Well, Johnny, uh, better get that kid off to school first. It's the holidays, isn't it?
man finds his way into a flat. No connection with the tenants, otherwise he wouldn't have had to pay his way in. Doesn't want to turn the place over. Wouldn't have hung about. No, just wants to be there, waiting for someone, keeping an appointment. All right, that's the product of my sleepless night. What's yours? Apart from slogging all the way to Rotterdam and back, you mean? Yeah. Knew his killer, let him in to talk. Appointment kept. No struggle. The choice of weapon suggests spur of the moment. Unpremeditated. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Sondag. She been to the mortuary? She's outside. I'll see her now. Yes, it is. I just bought him some things. I'll wait. I'll get you some coffee. No, no, don't worry. Mrs. Zondag? But I can't tell you much. Did you know where your husband was living? Well, when was the last time you saw him then? About three weeks ago. And he didn't tell you where he was going? I knew it was Amsterdam. He phoned once or twice. Our son's in hospital. Just had an operation on his eyes. He wanted to know how he was. Were you separated? Only by his job. What was that? The same as yours. Till he gave it up five years ago. It wasn't a scandal and it wasn't a nagging wife. He didn't want to be one of the pack anymore. Always his own man. Started up on his own. Inquiry agent. Hard at first. Question of building up trust. Naturally, I didn't argue. And recently, things were looking up. Though it kept him away a lot, and the boy missed him. I'll have to go to the hospital and break the news to him, won't I? Have you any idea what he was um, working on at the moment? No. He told me sometimes. But nothing about this one. Nothing at all. Well, thank you. This is on. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, did you get a phone? He didn't have to. I know the form. Not much good, I'm afraid. Last New Year's Eve. He didn't like being photographed. Thank you. Never known this before. Ah. It's not every wife. When her husband's been out all night without phoning. Ah. Turns up at his office with clean shirt, <laughs> socks, <No>. underpants. <laughs> Is that the man's widow? Hmm. Oh. Mm. Stuffed in with the recipe books. His? Same writing as the driving license signature. Jotting's nothing that makes any sense. All right, so what was he doing here then? Caretaker's given me all the names of the people in the block and some gossip, which might be useful. That's nice of him. I'm glad he's not my caretaker. Well, he's trying to get back into credit with you. Yes, it's expensive, but needless to say, it's empty. So, what? Uh, anyone move this furniture yet? Well, they shouldn't have done. Why? Well, I. You think they're Zondags? Doesn't matter whose they are. Isn't the people in this block we want to know about? It's the ones across the way. That's where he was looking for someone. I want to know all the names and all the tittle-tattle of everybody who lives with inside of this chair. Now? Yeah. Um, Miss Maylink, retired schoolmistress. Talks to herself, takes in stray cats, which is against the rules. 
Sublets a room to the Bon Airs, Surinamese couple, strictly against the rules. And, uh, Ronks, middle-aged couple, husband runs cafe, beats wife. Uh, Lighter, Austrian musician, once with the Amsterdam City Orchestra. Alcoholic, plays violin, better when drunk. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's quite promising. Uh, Sitzkorn, young man and his invalid mother. Mm. Faint into better times. He wheels her everywhere, does everything for her. Seems content. Both very chatty, don't get caught in the corridor with them. Okay. Young couple, haven't been there long. Boosilink. No trouble, quiet, not much known. Mrs. Post. Divorcee, pushing 40, chatty, works all day in a laundry, has men friends also, a parrot. Also against the rules. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. Good. And you got all that from the chatty caretaker over there, eh? I had to pay for it. All right, get it from petty cash. You don't need me for a bit now, do you? Yes. Start checking on Zondag. Bit conspicuous, aren't you? That's right. You're going to stay there all day? Yeah. Sooner or later, someone over there is going to take a special interest in me. And you were at home between six and seven yesterday evening, Mr. Sitzkorn? Yes. Is this where it happened? Mm-hmm. Gruesome. And you saw nothing? And why should we? We're not in this block. You noticed me just now. <laughs> oh, that's different, Commissaris. You were looking at me. Directly at me. I was just looking out of the window. I'm sorry, I saw nothing last night. My aunt was staying. You were with your mother and your aunt? Yes, my aunt Zena, my mother's younger sister. I uh, made our supper, braised oxtails. We ate at seven and watched the television, program on African art. Look, I can't stay long. My mother's downstairs in the lobby, in a draft. All right. a chance. Oh, you'd better not take too bloody long about it. I've been nervous here on my own all day. Ah. Mm. <coughs> What's that meant to be? Satay. Good God. Anything happened? No. Nothing on Zondag yet. Mm. Hey, you crossed some off. Yeah. Well, impoverished schoolmistresses who talk to themselves don't promise very much. And I've been watching the beaten wife coping with her husband admirably. She's got no time to look at me. Sits corn and his invalid man? Your favourites, busybodies, yeah. You know, they're pulling faces at me all day. I think I'm enlivening their deadly existence. Hmm. That leaves the violinist, the young couple, and the divorcee. Yeah, well, the last two are still there because I haven't seen them yet. Wait a minute, who's this? Now, that could be Mrs. Bruslick. But I didn't see her go out. Pretty. Yeah. Notice anything else? No, I don't think so. Her well, husband's looking at us. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Buslick? Yes. This is just a routine visit. May I come in? Thank you. What's this about? Haven't you heard? There's been a murder in the flats opposite. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. I heard about it in the shops. 
Yes, we're just asking around to see if anybody noticed anything between 6 and 7 yesterday evening. People in this block especially. That's the flat over there, on the ninth floor, second from this end. Well, were either of you in early evening? I was in. Yoss was on his way to work. Or would you like some coffee? I've just made some. Thanks. You work in the evenings. What do you do? He works as a projectionist at the cinema around the corner. Mm-hmm. Ever seen him before? I like his hat. No. No. Anything else? Come on. Time you're off to work. First show starts at seven. Oh, yes. What's on? Italian Western. Can I see you out? Coffee? Thank you. Come on, darling. Don't forget your sandwiches. Doesn't get a bit lonely? Only if you let it be. What were you doing last night? I was addressing all these. Begging letters. Oh, spastics, eh? And others. Different things. That's uh, unpaid work, isn't it? Don't you need the money? Money isn't everything. How long have you been married? About six months. And you? Hmm? Me? Yes. How long have you been married? <laughs> ah, ten years. It's nice, isn't it? Or don't you think so? It's all right. Oh, it's more than that for me, with Yoss. We look after each other. Where did you meet? University. Here, in Amsterdam? Mm. What's your subject? English literature. Yoss, too? No, he studied physics. Did you uh, last the course? I thought marriage was even more beautiful than the Anglo-Saxon poets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, thank you. <clears throat> Not much help, I'm afraid. No, no, still, it's, uh, it was a pleasant interlude, and they come in handy. Uh, thanks, anyway. And, uh, here, there's uh, something for your charities. Oh, no, thanks. Go on, why not? All right. Divorcee's back and spotted me. Want me to go over and question her? Later. Mrs. Booslink. We can't do this anymore. They're all onto us. The whole world's waving. Yeah. Find a tie-up with the Booslinks? No. Look, he was sat here for two weeks, staring out there at somebody, typing up a report, taking pictures. He was... Recording the activities of somebody for somebody, a client. Who? Where's that exercise book? Yeah. Ah, Albert Kipstrat coat. Blue something. Central Station, 420, hospital, Rotterdam phone number. That's his little boy, the eye operation. Excelsior, 7-12. Excelsior, what, cinema? Spaghetti Western on. What? Excelsior Cinema round the corner, Spaghetti Western on, I noticed. You're very observant. So our man went to the cinema one day. 7 till 12, that's more like working hours. Maybe he's kinky for violence, saw it round twice. Yours Bush Link works as a cinema projectionist. You make sure he works at the Excelsior. After that... I want to know everything you can find out about him and Emma at Amsterdam University till six months ago. Quick as you can. Don't we ever get to sleep on this one? Mmm, this is better. Today, Johnny bought me some gristle for lunch. Had the nerve to call it satay. <laughs> Aren't you having enough? He was a policeman. Hmm? Your murder victim. 
Policeman, I heard someone say. Ex-policeman. Inquiry agent. That's asking for trouble. What you're doing now, looking for the man who killed him? Come here. Give you something better to think about than that. Why does a girl, bright, attractive, middle class, throw up a university career to go and live in a drab, grotty flat with a cinema projectionist? Easy. Hey, wait for it. In a flat with no furniture and no books. No books. No books. Not one. Not even a dirty one that I could see. I knew a girl like that. Yeah. Gave up a brilliant future in higher mathematics. Walked out on it all. All right, what happened to her? She went to be a nurse in the Congo. Yes, I knew Emma Romeyer. She was a bright girl. She got in the wrong crowd, I'm afraid. Left us in the middle of her second year. Oh, too bad. Yes. She uh, laid a lot of people down. Did you know Jos Buslink? Oh, I'd seen him with her. Stupid of them to disappear without telling anyone. Her father asked me to help him find them, but it was impossible. Disappeared without a trace. Drugs the main problem. Eh? I believe so. You'd have to ask the boys' tutor about that. Very little drug taking in this college. Far less than people think. Yeah, I have spoken to the boys' tutor actually. Jos is a country boy, you know, from Aldersdown. Little village on the dikes. Family of eel fishers. Whereas Emma is more well to do, isn't she? What does her father do? I thought you knew that. He's from Zealand. He's a police chief. Now and then, yeah. Best way to forget police work. Relaxes you. Yeah. Now, how is my old friend Commissaris Halbeck? Is he well? Pretty well, yeah. Well, to give him my regards. We are in training college together. The Beaver, we used to call it. <laughs> I'd like a drink? <clears throat> Thanks. Prost. Prost. Yes. The Beaver. <laughs> yes, uh, about your daughter, sir. Yes? Do you know where she's living now? Uh, no, not the exact address. Uh, you haven't seen her then since she dropped out of university? Uh, no. But uh, you do know she's married to Jos Buslink? Well, with him, yes, not married. Aren't they? Good heavens, no. They might be by now, you know. No, no, no. She was always a high-spirited girl, but she has a mother's shrewdness. She'll make a gesture at independence. She won't ruin her life for it. She did drop out of university. Now, I don't want to sound impertinent, sir, but this gesture you talk about, could it be against you? Well, it always is in some measure, isn't it? Haven't you got children, Haldevalk? Especially in our profession. All their friends kicking against authority. I don't mean to be impertinent either. But if you think Boozling's mixed up in your murder case, isn't it him you should be investigating, not my daughter? That wouldn't exactly upset you, would it? Busling suspected of murder. Sorry, I don't follow you. There's no love lost between you, is there? I've hardly ever set eyes on him. But I'm not likely to be too... ...takes her off to live in squalor on the outskirts of Amsterdam. No, quite. Oh, have you seen the victim before, sir? I doubt it. Well, would you take a look, please? Oh, is this the best you can do? Do you honestly expect someone to recognize a man laughing in a party hat? <laughs> What's it mean? You know. No, I don't. No, leave it. All right. I've got one. Twelve, 
And yours was... Ten. But I'm out. Hurrah. Hurrah. <laughs> you win. Well done. You win as usual. <laughs> now it's time you were off. Come on. What will you do? Put all those envelopes to address. I'll come and meet you later. No. no I don't want you out at night. I'll be all right. Well, two nights ago, there was a murder. They haven't found the killer yet. Well, that's nothing to do with us. All morning on a boat in Zeeland. Now you bring me to the pictures. I'm just supposed to be working. Treat. I don't want to see this horrible film. No, nor do I. Where are you going? Back in a minute. Keep your eyes open for the raincoat again. Few more questions. Still routine? That depends. Told you, can't help you. Saw Emma's father this morning. But what's this got to do with your investigations? Nothing much yet. You can't smoke in here. Just trying to make a connection. A few stabs in the dark. And you're stabbing in the wrong direction here. He seemed to think you weren't married. He seemed to console him, that thought. We are married. On paper. Why not? Emma seemed very keen on marriage when I spoke to her. No particular reason. And no business of yours. Monday evening. You left the apartment at 6.15. You got here at 5 to 7, I checked. Well? That journey from the apartment takes 10 minutes at the most. Where were you? I don't remember. Oh, you'd better. Zondag was killed between six and seven. Not by me. I do remember now. I stopped for a snack. Where? At an automat. Look, why have you picked on us? We don't even know the man. We've never met him or seen him before. So why don't you just leave us alone and get out of here and let me put on the next reel? Rundown on some of Zondag's recent cases and people who knew him in Rotterdam. There's no evidence, nothing to link them. Also, we've had a couple of confessions. Usual nuts, lively but useless reading. And I took a call from Sitzkorn. He thinks that Lighter, the musician, is on drugs as well as drink, and he knows he's got an abandoned wife and two kids in Vienna. Oh, yes, yes, it's all very well, but give me something with a smell to it. I mean, where's that exercise book again? Yeah. Albert Kipstra, coat. You check that out. First thing tomorrow morning. That has a smell to it. Hi. Oh, hi, man. I'm uh, looking for a guy called Yoss. Know him? Yoss Booselink. Slight, fair. Said to come down here and ask for him, you'd know him. Here? That's right. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> I don't know no Yoss. Who? Boosalink. Boosalink? That's right. Well, he's not around here, brother, man. Sure? Positive. Ah, oh, that's a pity. Yeah. He was going to give me somewhere to crash down tonight. <laughs> well, too bad, eh? Yeah, well, you know, if he was round here, man, like if I knew him... Yeah, sure, okay, well, too bad, eh? Yeah, man, too bad.
from Brooklyn, man. I don't have no acid, man. I ain't got no coke, man. I'm clean. Listen, man. I can find enough to Listen, put on man, you to put you away for a long time. Now just get just smart. Straight, Where man. is the pusher you directed her to? What pusher, man? The pusher you no directed pusher, the girl I, to. I was she collecting love, for him? Man. For who? For Yoss Bustling. Was she collecting for Yoss wow. Bustling? I don't know. If that was the cat my man here was asking for. But I never heard of him. Look, I swear, if I knew anything, I'd spill, man. You won't even have to put the squeeze on me. I'm gutless. Just ask my friends. A man of no moral fiber at all, man. I just get told a password, you dig? Like a child's game, man. Right. Like little children. Get him games, out of here, will you? Man. I don't dig no dope, I said, man. Get him out. Go on, go, go. Oh. Oh, far out, man. Oh, say thanks, man. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, man. I don't even smoke marijuana, man. Yeah. That was a lead. A lead to Nuddyland. We've as good as established she collects for him. Confirmation of the obvious. And there's something else has been staring us in the face for three days. In his career as a policeman, Zondag was three years in the Zeeland district, Holmeyer's district. They must have known each other. I mean, how can you miss something like that? Emma, please. What do you want? To talk, that's all. Please let me in. We can talk here. I haven't come here to be angry. I understand. Do you? No, I just want to tell you, your mother and I will be very happy if you come and see us. Just visit us. Lots of people ask after your old friends, and Mitzi misses you. She's had puppies. She's asking after me too, is she? Don't be silly. Don't treat me like a child, Daddy. But it's hard not to when you behave like well, one. Go away. I'm sorry. Now no, listen please, to me. Go away. He'll kill you. Is he in there with you now? No, he's not. What the hell are you doing to her? Doing? You heard me. And I'm saving her from you for a start, aren't I? I want to talk to you. Both of you. Will you let me in? What's there to talk about? Please. You're dead peeping Tom. And you're not going to deny it, are you? So you knew he was watching you, Emma? Yes. It wasn't very difficult, was it, with this camera and binoculars? You wanted him to fix me, didn't you? Get me on a drugs charge, was that it? You knew. The whole block knew you was there. Yes, but you knew why. That's the difference. And that's what'll convict you. Uh, screw yourself. You haven't the chance, Boozerly. Give yourself up. And give me Emma. I don't care if you are a policeman. Get the hell out of here! You're stupid. My daughter's in danger. I demand your arrest, Boozerling. Without a proper case? What more do you need? I could have done with a bit more from you, sir. When I asked you if you knew the dead man, you denied it. I had my reasons. I can't follow them. I don't expect you to, Van der Valk. You're a city man, faceless, you have to be. In my community, I'm known. I have a position to keep up. If it comes out that my daughter was getting herself into undesirable company... All right, so that's why you hired an inquiry agent, uh, an ex-colleague, instead of going through the usual police channels. I still don't understand why you didn't help me. Do I have to justify myself to you? There could have been a hundred other reasons why Zondag was killed. When I began to see there weren't, I came at once to Amsterdam. Just to see your daughter? To see my daughter and to explain everything to you fully. Well, thank you. And now you think Busselink stabbed Sonder? I'm certain of it, so must you be. Well, why, where's the motive? All right, so your daughter runs off with an unsuitable young man. You hire an inquiry agent to run them to earth, and they knew they were being watched, you say? Busselink admitted it, I'm telling you. Yes, but why should Sonder worry them? He hadn't really reported any real dirt, had he? He was about to make his report. He telephoned me the night he was killed to say he wanted to see me in person. Busling killed him to stop him. I don't believe you were frightening them at all. Then why is Zondag dead? I don't know. Look, the boy is on drugs. I think you may be a little out of touch with our methods, sir. He knew I was going to deal with him. He admitted that to me himself an hour ago. Isn't that enough motive? Now, are you going to pick him up? Or do I have to use my position and have you taken off this case? It's your privilege, of course. All I'm prepared to do at the moment is check the place for drugs. I get a key from the caretaker. Nothing. No, we really have frightened them. I don't want to make extravagant claims about my daughter. 
But she was exceptional at school. Always top. Looks. Lovely personality. Bright future. Such a waste. Did you ever meet Jospus Link before they dropped out? She brought him back to the house once for the weekend. He insisted on coming. Wasn't asking for a hand, was he? <laughs> Good God, no. A type like that. Marriage. No, I was out of touch. Type like that usually avoids the girl's parents. He wanted to be as offensive as possible to me, my wife, our friends. He's the sort who wants to destroy accepted social values. Touch of the anarchist? Oh, that's too polite a word for him. What puzzles me is what's an anarchist doing, grinding out a menial wage as a projectionist, a job well below his capabilities, whilst your daughter is sitting at home twiddling her thumbs? Well, you don't expect her to go out and get a job as a waitress, do you? Oh, yes, it might help, or something even better. Well, she's no qualifications now, thanks to him. Look, I'm no fool. I know what happened. Emma's always had a strong mothering instinct. She picked up a lame dog. She thinks she's being heroic, giving her life to him. Oh, it's a phase. She'll get over it. If that's your reading, why did you put the inquiry agent on? Well, my wife was with me on that. After that weekend, we both thought the boy was mentally unstable. Lame dog with rabies? Proved now, isn't it? Provincial policeman. God. He withholds vital information. Then he blames me. Mm, you did hang back a bit there, didn't you? Well, I didn't have a case. I still haven't. They've run away. From her father, that's not a crime. They're your chief suspects. Yeah, yeah, I know. Do you think she's safe? Well, of course she is. He won't harm her. Why should he? Just harm the man who comes after him, hmm? An inquiry agent. And now you. Yes, well, maybe I will uh, bring them in on suspicion and ask questions afterwards. Can I make a small observation? Mm -hmm. So far, all your attention's been on her. I mean, I know she's bright and brilliant and young and very attractive. But if you'd concentrate a bit more on him, you might have a better idea of what's going on. The plain fact is, Craig, if we'd spent a little less time looking at her and a little more concentrating on him, we'd have been here a lot faster. Alders down, four kilometres, turn left. Can you get to the open sea from here? That's sea going, that one. That's him, right? Must be. First there's life, then the struggle, then death, then nothing. Hmm. Hang push link? Yes. We're looking for your brother, Yost. Do you know where he is? What do you want of him? Hasn't he told you? He never tells me anything much. You know Emma, don't you? Yes. Nice girl, eh? Lucky fella, Yoss. Some might say. Wouldn't you? Never go to the city much. I don't know much about that sort of girl. Well, you know enough to form an opinion, don't you? I mean, brothers are usually curious about each other's girlfriends, aren't they? You want an opinion? I'd say she wasn't much good for him. Why not? If you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, well, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe he isn't much good for her. Bad influence on a well-brought-up girl, ruining her life. That's a lie. How can you be sure? They're here, aren't they? They're hiding in this village, or being hidden. Yes, has got nothing to be ashamed about. Why don't you go and take your nasty suspicions elsewhere?
her father with you? No, he's in Amsterdam. Bastard. Or possibly just an anxious father. He's got reason to be. Oh, yeah. Cigarette. Don't use him. I'm not frightened of you. Why did you run away? Because of her father. You afraid of Homer? I don't believe it. I didn't say it. Emma afraid? No. What then? She was upset. I had to get her away. What was she upset about? Sondag watching you? Yes, partly. Yes, she'd been ill. Ill? She looked pretty healthy to me. <laughs> no, no. You don't understand. All right. Go on. I'm listening. She was getting better. I was making her better slowly. It had to be a complete break from everything. Another week in that place. But the apartment? No. No university where it all started. I had to get her right away. And that's why I took the flat and the job at the cinema to make some money to live on. I couldn't tell anyone, because that was the only way. Even then I was worried about leaving her on her own at nights. But she was doing all right. I fixed up for her to address some envelopes for charity. She was coming on fine. Is that enough? There's no books, nothing no, to occupy no, no, no. her mind. It can't be. That's part of the trouble. Any kind of mental stimulation. She can't cope. Even simple word games. Scrabble. She can't make the words. Can't you get treatment? No, no, you've got it all wrong. This isn't any ordinary mental trouble. This is acid. LSD. I've seen the ones that go for treatment to the hospital. It's no good. They have to have care and attention. Humanity. And I was winning. I was. Till Holmeyer poked his nose in, getting us watched, trailing round after us. We used to see his man in the window with the glasses on us. We laughed about it. I mean, I'm, I'm not frightened of her father, but he can't see that it's her who's sick. No. It's me. I went down once to his big house. Swimming pool. Try to explain. He wouldn't listen. Just threw me out. Yeah, he really believes he's going to get me on a drugs charge. And how he's going to cook it up against me, I don't know. As I said, I didn't mind, but I could see it was getting into her. One night, I came home, and she was really freaked out. But where she got it from, all the money, I don't know. <laughs> Must have been some old contact she knew before I met her. We had a terrible row. She promised she wouldn't do it again. This happened two or three times. Including the night of the murder? Yeah. Including the night of the murder. You're lying. What? Lying. You just describe your own condition, you've put it onto her. You think that? What's to stop me? Oh, I see. Oh, so that's how it goes. You and the police chief. Well, I can't beat that. So you might as well take me in, eh? Go on. What are you waiting for?
What were you going to do, stay here forever? I hadn't thought about it. We were just going to stay here for a bit. And maybe get a boat out of Holland and start somewhere else, I don't know. And you could live the rest of your life, the two of you, knowing that she'd killed a man? Oh, she was freaked out when she did it. She doesn't know. She's forgotten already, just bad dreams. There's a little boy in a hospital in Rotterdam who hasn't got a father. Look, I don't expect you to understand. But I need her. I'm as much dependent upon her as she is on me. Please don't take her away. Just let us work it out together. We won't get in anybody else's way, I promise. Are you expecting her back soon? Yes, she went out to get some shopping. Oh, yes, that's right, we saw her. What? We saw her on a bike. Oh, my God, did she see you? Rode a bike off a bridge. You satisfied now? Why couldn't you leave us alone? You still think I did it? Well, look at her. Do you think she killed herself because you come for me? Well, you're not going to bring her back to life again, are you, you interfering bastards? <laughs> 